It's Friday, March 8th, 2024, and this is the Talk Film Society podcast. I am your host, Marcelo Pico, editor-in-chief of Talk Film Society. Here with me, as always, is my co-host throughout this entire awards season series. It's Siobhan Irving. Hello, Siobhan. Hey, Marcelo. Hey. Wow. Oh, I mean, can you feel it? It's Oscar's biggest night. Sure is. Sure. It's the Oscar's biggest night. Is. Oh, God. It's the Talk Film Society Awards. The 11th wow. annual. Wow. All the stars are out tonight. Look Look at that star over there. You got uh, Matt Curion. <laughs> Wait, who? <laughs> uh, no, I was like looking at the stars in the sky. Oh, no. It's nighttime as we tape this. Yeah, it's 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 9 p.m. Uh, Central Time. Uh, I was I was gonna make a joke about the stars being the people in the Discord. Okay, yes, yes, yeah. the the real Matt C. Yeah, uh, uh, and a friend of the site, Sam shot first. Yes, uh, and, and and who's that over there? You got you got you got Chelsea. Whoa, Jay McMillan is here. Oh, hey, and the rest, <laughs> Joey, of course, <laughs> Joey. <laughs> uh, uh, who else? Uh, Thomas, of course, Thomas, um, and uh, the his... rest. <laughs> Brian, we got to. If we're doing Thomas, we got to do Brian. No point. I don't know if Brian's in the Discord. Shows uh, up in like a sidecar with him. Yeah, <laughs> sidecar. Uh, by the way, this is going to be a, uh, a little edits uh, uh, in post episode. By the way, I'm not cutting anything out. This is going to be a live to tape, just like the just like any award ceremony. Uh, we're, like, we're like Joe Coy struggling on stage at the Golden Globes. Yeah, you're telling me that if Joe Coy didn't get an edit, that he wouldn't be fucking killed. <laughs> If 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 he said let me let me film this a week in advance, <laughs> and, and, yeah. and let me send you the the, the twenty minutes you know pre cut, he would have killed. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. But he only got the job ten days before. Yeah, I mean he. I mean uh, uh, if you didn't know that, I mean you weren't paying attention because he re- repeated it like five times in the span of like ten minutes. And it, and by the way, the jokes you were laughing at, those were his. Those were his. The ones that bombs. Somebody else wrote those jokes. Those, Somebody else wrote those. He said those aren't my jokes. Those aren't mine. Anyway. I agreed to say them because I thought they were funny, but <laughs> but that's not that's neither here nor there. We're your hosts for the Talk from Society Awards, which will happen. In a bit, this this is more like the uh, the, uh, the 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 pre show, like the like the E live on the red carpet, yeah, the yeah. red carpet, yeah. The stars what are, are out. Looking forward to seeing the most tonight, Marcella. Who who or what? What? Uh, I'm looking forward to honoring the films of 2023. Wow! Yes. Yeah, I'm. I'm also looking so forward exciting. to. That's what this awards. That's what. That's what this whole show is all about, really. Yeah, if you think yeah. about it, uh, and we've been doing this for now for a whole mm, ten years. <laughs> yeah, uh, is it, or is this our tenth annual yeah, Talk Film Society? It's, it's the it's the eleventh annual, but it's been ten years since the first ceremony. Uh, the 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 annual thing is kind of tricky. Eleventh. Um, uh, okay, so it's the eleventh anniversary. Y- no, <sighs> Siobhan. Give me a break. Oh it the the first one was the first annual, so that was a like year zero. Okay, so it's the it is our tenth anniversary, but uh, but the eleventh time we're doing the awards. Does that make sense? The, yeah, yeah. Um, well, I mean, I I do know that. Uh, see what I'm looking up here is the tenth anniversary. Uh, we we are supposed to give gifts of tin or aluminum. <laughs> tin or aluminum. Yes. Uh, what what nominees this year uh, 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 could you connect to tin or aluminum? Like, uh, um, uh, I mean, it, uh, uh, it, what's the bomb and Oppenheimer made of? Yeah, that's what I was going to go to first. Uh, is there a lot of uh, aluminum in there? Yeah. Um, uh, Killers of the Flower Moon. I'm, ass- I'm assuming there's a lot of aluminum in that city. Godzilla, I bet, destroys a shit ton of it. Yeah, yeah. Tin or aluminum. There's some metal uh, that he tears up. Um, what else? Uh, Maestro. The the instruments are made of tin and aluminum. Um, these are these are elements we've had for a long time, used to make things for a long time. So yeah. I, oh, I, even even back in past lives days. Wait a second. Ah, I'm clever. Hold on. I know what's made of tin or aluminum. This drink. Ah, I just sprayed uh, some all over my microphone. <laughs> yeah, we're getting twisted tonight. Uh, we're we're all having a fun time. We're having a great time. I'm I'm drinking first time I've I've uh, had a drink on mic in a long time. I figured tonight is a good opportunity to just celebrate. 
Yeah. The film, you hear that pour? He, you hear that pour? Yeah. It's he swore it off for a while. He he said he had a problem, but we're going to let him have one tonight. <laughs> That's right. Uh, I, I, again, this is a celebration. Uh, uh, also, very happy to almost be done with this show <laughs> for another year. Oh, my God. I am excited. <laughs> That's what I'm really excited about, Marcella. What, one more week of this? Next week is the is the grand finale. Is the Oscars. Woo! And then that's yeah, baby. it. And then we take a break and then come back and dream all, <laughs> dream it all up again. <laughs> yes, yeah. that is worth a uh, hold on. You're going to have a drink too. I'm going to have a drink too. I'm going to pop that open. This is a swig of tequila. Oh, nice. Tequila. Did I do one of these before the show already? <laughs> Maybe, but Maybe. why not another one? Why huh? not? Keep going. Come on. We 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 literally <laughs> We have like three hours to get through this, so 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 drink away. So if this goes three hours, I'm gonna fucking scream. <laughs> <laughs> before before we recorded, you were, you said this will be a short one. I go. I think no it will be short. Let's, let's, I, uh, I think the red carpet is just about ending. I see. <laughs> I see our last guest, Noah Thompson, coming by. Hey, no. So hey, Noah. Uh, okay, look, listen, listen, listen. Okay, fine. We'll we'll start the awards here in a bit, but we have some business to to, to take care of up uh, up front. Okay, um, first uh, I'll say thanks to all the voters, uh, everybody in the Discord, everybody uh, online, listeners, whoever voted in uh, uh, in these awards. You pick the winners. Literally, the voting still happening as we speak. Uh, we'll get to that later. Uh, there's one category that uh, we'll, we'll we'll talk about. Um, but that's later. Uh, but yeah, thanks. Uh, and thanks to you, Siobhan. I mean, uh, all joking aside, uh, just pumping out episodes week to week. Uh, it's been fun talking to you and we're, we're, we're racing towards the end. It's like, this is it. This like, like Grand Prix. Remember those days? <laughs> ah, Grand Prix. Uh, a, a, a film I think fondly of, uh, I mean, I do too. Uh, uh last episode I cut out. Like the five minute stretch of us ranking the 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 movies we saw this season, um, but off the top of your head, Siobhan, I mean, I think we watched some good movies. Uh, um, Grand Prix, pretty good. Sense of the Lambs, great. Uh, I know we ended yeah. on English Patient, which kind of soured the mood. Yeah, definitely the worst. Uh, yeah. Master and Commander, fantastic. Uh, JFK, JFK, excellent. Yeah, uh, Frida. I was a big fan of Frida on a rewatch. Spirited Away. Oh, Spirited Away. God. I mean, come on! One of the classics of all time. Yeah. Uh, what else? What else? What else? Uh, Moulin Rouge. Oh my god. The gosh. Apartment. The apart. Oh, Best Picture winner, The Apartment. Gravity and a Fish Called Wanda, of course. Yes, Gravity. Fish and then the Wanda. final one, Girl Interrupted. Oh, first. <laughs> that's right. Girl Where it all began. Uh, I mean, uh, to 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 think we started with watching Girl Interrupted for Best Supporting Actress <laughs> back in December, and now it's early March. Uh, time yep. sure does fly. Uh, speaking of time flying, ten years. Siobhan said it earlier. Ten years of the Talk from Society Awards. Uh, the this is the eleventh annual. Siobhan had a brilliant idea. Uh, right, Siobhan, to watch a movie. Yeah, for I, this episode. I, it's been it's been ten years since been- we done this. Ten years is a very it's the 10 anniversary. It's a very special anniversary. Uh, and I said, let's, we, we, we always do this movie of the week thing. So I guess we got to add this to the movie of the week thing. Yeah. 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 We'll, we'll, we'll see how this ranks. Uh, I mean, this was an Oscar winner, uh, but more importantly, uh, why is it that you picked this movie? This Siobhan? one, our very first ever TFS award, best film. Wow. Winner. Yeah. And, um, and that rocks. And we were like, let's look back and see uh, how it holds up. Yeah. It, <laughs> well, well, let's let's get into that now. This is our movie of the week. Uh, movie of the week. Before we, it's her, by the way. The it's her, her. Yes, the movie's her. Her? No, 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 no. no. Not, Spike Jones. Not not an Arrested Development joke. This is her. Yes, by Spike Jones. Um, I'm opening up the page. Jackass's to her. own Spike Jones. Uh, Babylon's own Spike Jones. Um, so yeah, uh, I have not seen this movie in ten years. I, I looked. Th- I looked at the letterbox. Uh, February 2014 is when I last saw this. Um, and yeah, this is a brilliant idea to go back to see 
um, you know, this the first winner. Uh, uh, real quick, the Talk Film Society Awards. I uh, like in twenty late twenty thirteen. I saw that uh, the LA Film Critics Circle, New York Film Critics Circle, all these circles were handing out awards, and I go, I can make my own circle. I can make my own society. And I started the Tweet Film Society and just asked people uh, who I followed or who follow me on Twitter uh, on this account on uh, on Talk Film Society to say, hey, I asked them, hey, what are your favorites of the year? And thus it began. And after counting those votes, the winner was her. And let's look back 10 years. So how long has it been since you've – I'm assuming you've seen this before, right, Siobhan? Yeah, it's it's probably been 10 years Honestly, it's probably been just as long. We were both coming at this from the same place. Yeah. Um, I had a few memories of it. I remember liking it a lot uh, uh, when it came out. I was happy that this won the Talk from Society Awards that first year in, in, in 2014. Um, and yeah, I, I'll, I'll dig up the, the, the nominees of that year and, and we'll look back at the Talk from Society Awards and the Oscars. But your initial thought on her, this this now ten year old film, Siobhan. Quick thoughts before we dig deeper. Uh, yeah, I also uh, liked it a lot at the time. I, I had a poster of it in my wall. I did uh, deeply enjoy the film, and I, I always thought it was cool that it was our first winner. Um, so that's kind of a cute off the ball, off the wall choice. Yeah, I remember being moved by it back then, but I think I was more moved by it now. 10 years removed because I've been through it. I've been through big same. Yeah. I, well, <laughs> we can get into it as much as you want, uh, in a bit, Siobhan, but, uh, yeah, I been through it. I think we've both been through it. Uh, we've grown as people and a lot of it, I think hit closer to home this time than the first time I saw it. I'm now in my mid thirties back then I was in my mid twenties. So big difference. And I can see how, personal with this film is to spike jones it just feels like he was really digging through his own life and putting it on screen and i'm like oh boy uh uh it's 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 a lot it's pretty heavy it's heavier than i thought it'd be it's yeah it's significantly heavier than i remember it being and that's just because i was 18 years old and stupid um it's a very 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 personal film very uh uh, intimate film that I think uh, uh, tells a lot of truths, hard truths uh, that are uh, very beautiful and uh, well observed and come from a very sensitive place. Uh, Spike Jones, clearly a very sensitive person, I think. Yeah. I think that much is clear. And a very talented writer, uh, able to depict these. Uh, I mean, essentially, uh, for me, I was able to connect this quite clearly to my recent uh, breakup I had over. It was a long distance relationship, and even the like. I mean, the the film's about uh, Joaquin Phoenix falling in love with an AI played by Scarlett Johansson. I mean, even though that's a love with a machine, I I, I had love with a real person through a machine. Yeah, and you know, essentially, it is exactly the same thing. And uh, they really go through all stages of it <laughs> and very, very accurately. And uh, it was hard to watch. It was very, very hard to watch. And I'm still kind of in the state where I'm not over it, really. And, like, watching this now is a little triggering. And But I'm glad I watched it because I like to torture myself. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm a masochist, Marcelo. Uh, uh... You you messaged me about an hour ago saying why why did you pick this uh, fuck you Marcelo I think is what you <laughs> sent me um, but yeah no uh, what, what, uh, watching it last night I'm like yeah I thought to myself yeah Siobhan's gonna get a lot out of this <laughs> <laughs> I did I did I did yeah okay. uh, but I feel fine yeah okay. and I'm uh. And it's a good movie. It's a very, very good movie. I, I think it's I think it's legitimately great. I, it, it, it speaks to me in the way uh, I can compare it to uh, 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 this past year's past lives. Similar in I think in speaking to kind of the uh, you know the truths of being in love and romance and the uh, the, the the hardship of like that break of not loving somebody. 
I think I, I th- those kinds of movies do speak to me now that I'm older, um, and I think speak to to anybody who's gone through a breakup. So this one for sure. I I was a little I was kind of expecting this to maybe not so hold up as not hold up as well because I was kind of thinking maybe this is one of those films that was like kind of twee and quirky, right? You know that that's it, it sort of had that in my head but it's it's i don't think it is that at all yeah it it has um, a, it has a tiny bit of that i think with the tiny. the wardrobe uh I, I i remember people i mean not 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 but a few weeks ago some i i was i was listening to a podcast where they made fun of the pants in this movie and her <laughs> which i'm like oh that's <laughs> right <laughs> like this that is kind of a bit twee and ridiculous but i think other than that no i think it it holds up fine maybe it, it it holds up like uh, uh, um, maybe too well because I, I think uh, Spike Jones really did predict the future pretty well. Like we we're kind of living in yeah. in in her now um, a little bit. Yeah, I mean, I mean we're not falling in love with our operating system. Not we yet. Are, like we are more and more, more and more and more and more addicted to online and. Uh, some of us are doing stupid things like getting in long distance relationships and some of us are like uh, just just talking to people th- through uh, a microphone on Skype uh, for yeah. hours on end uh, yeah. I, I could be an AI Siobhan could be an AI uh, exactly. yeah so it's uh, uh, the, the, the the connectivity uh, that I think this movie uh, put forth I, I think I think we were close to or pretty much there to grasping it in 2014 or sorry, 2013, but now we fully embraced it. It's, um, it's here. Uh, and, and I think the, uh, the AI aspect of it really, I think hit the nail on the head when like, um, Joaquin Phoenix is like playing a human, uh, a letter writer falling in love with an AI system and uh, being somebody who worked in developing AI, uh, uh, I felt very connected to Joaquin Phoenix's character in that, like, you you need a human element to kind of create the, 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 the falsity of an AI. But also, like, I can see somebody falling over with an AI because everything that the AI is based off of is from a human. Like, it's it comes from true, like, humanity. And and you see that in like Joaquin Phoenix's job, which is like writing fake letters or not fake, but like writing real letters to real people, but like under this assumption that somebody else is writing them, you know. Anyway, that's that. It's it's. I could write an article about it, I guess, but I'm just spouting it here on a podcast. But I think it's very true to 2024 that 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 like point of view of this writer falling with an AI feels all too real now. Um, but yeah, why don't we go back to the Oscars first? All right. What was her up against? Uh, what did her Oscars? get nominated for? What did her get nominated for? Best Picture. Siobhan, take a wild guess. What really? do you think? What do you think won Best Picture in 2020? Sorry. Let me take that again because... Let's see. Yeah, Siobhan, what do you think won Best Picture? Uh, the 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 uh, Oscar ceremonies uh, honoring the films of 2013 uh, was held on March 2nd, 2014, hosted by Ellen, uh, hosted by Ellen DeGeneres. Uh, can you guess the Best Picture of that year? I remember. So that's the year that. Gravity swept, but did not win, right? And the film that did beat Gravity, couldn't tell you. Yeah, uh, you're right about the Gravity thing. Uh, Gravity was nominated this year. Uh, I'll give you the list of nominees uh, leading up to the winner. Let's see if you can, let's see if this will jog your memory. Okay, nominated for Best Picture this year was Wolf of Wall Street, Philomena, and by the way, I just realized we did do this when we covered Gravity. <laughs> we did this. Yeah. Uh, the Gravity I, yeah. year. Uh, Wolf of yeah. Wall Street, Philomena, Nebraska, Her, Gravity, Dallas Buyers Club, Captain Phillips, American Hustle, and the winner, which is, get one, one last chance. No. 12 Years a Slave. Ah, uh, goddammit. Yeah. Um, 
gonna be honest, ten years on, good movie, but not the most memorable movie. Um, not not one that I think has held onto the public consciousness. Um, I, I think the one from that group that really did or is still like in the public consciousness is Wolf of Wall Street. Um, Gravity, I think so. Her, yeah. Captain Phillips, even. Um, but the rest, eh. Twelve Years a Slave, eh. Uh, I don't know. Still a good movie. Uh, best director, Alfonso Cuarón, Gravity. Uh, McConaughey won for best actor for Das Buyers Club. Kate Blanchett won for Blue Jasmine. Remember that. Mm-hmm. Jared Leto, supporting actor, Das Buyers Club. Uh, best supporting actress, Lupita Nyong'o, Twelve Years a Slave. I think that was deserved. Uh, Twelve Years a Slave, best adapted screenplay. And of course, best original screenplay. Guess who won? It was 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 this it? It was her. Did it yeah, did it win in an Oscar? Yeah, Spike Jones won an, won an Oscar for her. Wow, Spike Jones, good for you. Yeah, uh, let's go back to the full list of nominations for her. Uh, original screenplay was the only one it won. It was also nominated for best picture. Best Original Score. That is a great score, by the way. Um, Best Original Song. Great song. uh, The Moon Song. And Best Production Design. I think that's also a pretty well-deserved nomination. Um, Yeah, it is. It's it's got this kind of, like, mm, very modernist, uh, stark, bleak... uh or like very uh, clean and open space. Uh, yeah. Uh, photographed beautifully by one Hoyt Van Hoytema. Yes. Yeah. I I was uh, I was happy to see his name uh, in the end credits. I'm like, oh, that's that guy. Uh, that guy who's in the running this year, right? For so, best cinematographer. Yeah, Siobhan. Before this started, and this is going to be relevant, Marcelo asked me a question. What year do you think this is set in? I don't know if that's actually answered in the film or not, but it feels just near futuristic enough through the wardrobe, through the way that things are filmed. Like we only see uh, large cityscapes and like these weird colors that like it just, it does not look like our modern day, but it looks like just near enough in the future you know like it like it looks like maybe it's predicting 20 years into the future yeah um, so I, I i would say 2032 that's that's my yeah guess. no th- i think i think that's good again like uh um say for like a few things like in terms of technology like are are we close to getting like uh, a holographic uh, uh, gaming console like the one kind of that I Monkey mean, Phoenix has? Not exactly, but I think we could get it. <laughs> like yeah. If, yeah, if they felt like there was a market for it, I think it's potentially like that could happen. Yeah, like like we're like we're pretty close, and yeah, I think by twenty thirty we'll 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 have fully like surpassed uh, the 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 her era. Um, I, I find fascinating. Like I again, I should look this up but the fact that he has like an earpiece that are basically airpods and they he can do so much with them it's like yeah. were we able to do that 10 years ago or we were I wondered that too. Or, or are we or were we just going to do that i don't know uh it's, it's stuff like that it's spot on and um i don't know like honestly talking about this movie it feels like i haven't talked about it in 10 years it doesn't feel like it's I mean, to me, it has a special place in my heart for a lot of reasons. But, you know, I wish more people would talk about this movie. Like, like sort of, like, analyzing it like we are. Like, it, Yeah, I, it should make a comeback. Yeah, it should. You know, because uh, you could you could compare it to... I mean, this is a grand comparison, but like a Blade Runner, where uh, as we move, f- you know, forward into the future, like, we we look at this movie like Blade Runner and say, oh, it's... It was ahead of its time. It it captured, uh, try to capture a sci-fi future that we're we're racing towards. So, um, great movie. I mean, emotionally, do we want to talk more about that? Because I have more things to talk about that. Um, oh wait, wait. Before we get before we break our hearts here, um, let me go back to the Talk Film Society Awards. I forgot to do this. Okay, it won Best Film at the Talk Film Society Awards. Okay. Um, I will tell you exactly uh, what else was nominated this year for Best Film, uh, as decided by 
uh, those voting 10 years ago. Best film. Here were your nominees for the Talk Film Society Awards. 12 Years a Slave. American Hustle. Before Midnight. Gravity. Her. Inside Lewin Davis. Short Term 12. Spring Breakers. The Wolf of Wall Street. And The World's End. Wow. Look, look at that list. <clears throat> look at that list. We used to be so cool. <laughs> Not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, honestly, okay. Uh, 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 before midnight, getting in there. I mean, talk about a movie that's held up and is still looked back on, uh, and as like uh, uh, to the Dan Criterion great, Collection. Yeah, that before trilogy, which is uh, amazing. Uh, people still talk about it. Um, is it. About time for another one of those. Or is it too late. Uh, almost. Uh, no, I, I think we're past the nine year mark. I think to do it every nine years. I think the pandemic kind of uh, uh, push things, uh, you know. It, I, I, I don't know if they said they weren't going to do one right away or they're going to wait and, like, do another trilogy, like, in later age. 18 years. Yeah, something like that. But I, hey, knowing Linklater uh, and how he's, like, uh, filming that Merrily We Roll Along movie over 30 years, I want to I want to put it past him to make a before movie. Yeah. Uh, in like ten years' time, you know, and and capture you know these characters in in old age. Um, Inside Lewin Davis, another movie that's held up, that people still talk about. Uh, Short Term Twelve. I mean, for God's sake, look at that cast. The like half yeah, of that cast is twelve. It, that, that 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 film, like that that was that film, predicted the next like ten years of our of our cast. Yeah, of our, with the cast. I mean, I I believe in that cast. You have somebody who's in uh, two uh, two Oscar winners. Yeah, uh, Brie Larson. Who else is in there? Um, I should pull this Rami up. Malek. That's it. That's who I'm thinking of. Rami Malek. Lakeith Stanf- Stanfield. Man, movie. Um. Okay. What else? Oh, Spring Breakers. Oh, uh, Spring Breakers. Oh. <sighs> one of my one uh, one of the uh, a timeless film. One that I rewatched just last year. Absolutely holds up. It does. Yeah, I I th- I believe I saw it last year as well, and I I was like, yeah, this captured a moment. Like this this captures twenty thirteen, like the the, the, oh, the early twenty tens, so beautifully. Like like this is it. Like if you want to go back and feel what the 2010s were go back and watch Grandpa, Spring Breakers. what were the early 2010s like oh uh, let, i got a film to show you <laughs> let me pull out my 4k blu-ray <laughs> what is that you have in your hand grandpa can't you watch it through your brain vision <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, you kids look you kids this is physical media <laughs> Uh, also, The World's End, which, a good Edgar Wright movie. Uh, uh, some some would say the best of that trilogy, the Cornetto trilogy. I like it a lot. Um, but yeah, I mean, come on. Uh, uh, picking her out of this 10, I, I think we did a good job 10 years ago. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, quickly going through the other winners. Best independent film was Before Midnight. Um, let's see. Best foreign film, Blue is the Warmest Color. Best Director, Alfonso Cuaron, Gravity. Uh, let's see. Oh, we, we gave Best Original Screenplay to Spike Jones for her. Uh, yeah, Best Acting Ensemble, The Wolf of Wall Street. Uh, but yeah, what a, what a year. Uh, oh, uh, uh, this is worth noting, because I think we're going to talk about this later. Uh, uh, I gave out, or I say I because I was in charge of these two awards, but I, I asked around and, 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 um, took feedback on what, on what we could give this to, but we had two, uh, uh, special awards, an honorary award and the founders award. I guess the founders award is more self-explanatory. The honorary award went to Mark Scorsese, a film, a shoemaker, uh, for their work over the years and for the Wolf of Wall Street. And the founders award went to Matthew McConaughey for being in mud Dire Spires Club and The Wolf of Wall Street on one year. So, okay. there you go. That was the first annual talk from Society Awards. Back to her. What else can we say about her? her? Hmm. What else you got to say about her? I don't know. I feel, I feel like I said it all. Yeah, uh, dedicated I to James Gandolfini. Yes, yes, yes. 
Uh, I mean, I, 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 I want to go through this cast a bit before we move on because uh, some of this cast uh, was was a shock. Or, 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 or more, more specifically, seeing Chris Pratt in this was a jump scare. I yeah, go, ah. The biggest movie star in the world in this film. <laughs> is is in like. A small bit part. In, in a bit part that I think he should be doing, <laughs> that he's good at, <laughs> kind of playing like a. Do you think he'll ever get back there? Ah, uh, I don't think so, which is a shame. <laughs> because, I mean, he, he did it for how many years? Like on Parks and Rec. And then he, and then he does this that kind of that sort of sh- uh, same shtick in this. He's good at being like like a comedic supporting actor. Like he's got the chops for that. Mm-hmm. Sure, whatever you know, a- action hero, leading man. That's to me. That's boring. I, I I'd rather see this kind of Pratt than the other Pratt. But whatever. Olivia Wilde as the blind date. I I uh, Siobhan, I mean to be brutally honest. That sequence really struck home with me, <laughs> being on several Did blind it. dates that felt like it was going just fine, and then all of a sudden it doesn't go fine. <laughs> it's it, it does again. That's why I said earlier it feels very personal. It feels like Spike Jones was saying uh, a lot of things that, that uh, putting on screen a lot of things that he's gone through uh, as an adult trying to find love. But that scene in particular really hit home. It's like, oh Jesus, yeah, that's that felt real. But she's uh, great in Rooney it. Mara. Rooney Mara. Rooney I, I, I kind of want to. I, I want to talk about Rooney Mara, Amy Adams, and Scarlett Johansson. So Mara, in the brief moment she's in this, uh, I guess brief nonverbal moments, like the memories, like that to me hit me too because yeah, uh, having been through a relationship myself where I spent six years with somebody, and thinking back on all the good times, um, and sort of like that being heavy on my mind as I try to move on with my life. Like, yeah, it, 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 it gets it right. It, it, it gets that sort of like trying to break away from somebody, but also having them, uh, just over your shoulder on your mind, like they're Pervade your mind. Yeah. 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 Uh, the, the, the moments where like she criticizes, criticizes him for being in love with an AI. And then that thought, you know, just going through his head and, him making mistakes as he deals with uh, Scarlett Johansson's AI character. Yeah, that that felt very real and and like very uh, like honest, like in, in how you deal with like a past love. Um, so that was a great performance from Mara in, in like the brief uh, scene she was in. Uh, Amy Adams is great. I, I, I think like her her performance through the movie by the end. I think felt like very, like like uh, uh, the 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 kindred spiritness of her with Joaquin Phoenix mm-hmm. really hit home. Like it 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 also feels very real on that. Like you know these people who are going through the same thing, but not at the same moment. It's like you could talk with somebody who's like in a relationship, and you're going through a breakup, but then you're moving forward, and like they break up, and like it. it, 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 it do you know what I'm saying? It's like you're friends with somebody who you're both at different points in your life. And at the very end, when I guess spoiler, like they're both broken up with, they're both kind of alone. They meet at that rooftop and they're there for each other. Finally, it feels like, like they, like they know each other too well and where they are, where they can fully relate. So I find that very helpful. uh, Maybe this is too much for on Mike, but I, I felt like, there's an aspect of Amy Adams that is like the inverse of me uh, uh-huh. that like Amy Adams is her and not me. Um, and that like seeing that was kind of heartbreaking to see it from another perspective. Um, uh, and uh, soul crushing. Uh, I want to say Spike Jones, a um, uh, small part uh, kind of cast himself as like, I don't want to say the asshole, just like kind of oblivious, perfectly nice guy, but like just isn't right. You know, wait, was it Spike Jones you were talking about? No, I was talking about Amy Adams. Oh, sorry. No, I, and then I, I moved to Spike Jones. Oh, sorry. Um, Amy Adams is the one that breaks the relationship with Spike Jones. And send Spike Jones spiraling out to being a a, <laughs> a Buddhist monk or something. 
But that, uh, out. Siobhan, I have to correct you. That wasn't Spike Jones. <laughs> was it not? No, no. Uh, I you're, thought they were together. No, hold on. You're, you're, yeah, uh, that, that's why I was confused because Amy Adams' character is going out with, I'll look it up. Who is Amy with? She's divorcing Charles. Charles is played by Matt Lester. Okay, well, the, the way that she breaks up with Matt Lester and her... Uh, <clears throat> And having her friend there, Joaquin Phoenix, to tell her, like, do not feel guilty. Uh, that yeah. part is, like, what hit me hard. It was like, god damn it. Yeah, she's right to move on. Yeah, no, no, no. Yeah, uh, that that was, br- yeah, because, I mean, to be honest, like. But being but being on the opposite side of right. that. Being- and knowing that, that, that she is just moving on, that hurts. Yeah, being the, uh, the Charles uh to yeah. the Amy character. Uh I yes, I'm I'm with you. <laughs> yeah, to be brutally honest, I was that I was in that position of somebody basically saying that's enough. I'm I'm a uh, I can't take this anymore. I'm I have to move on. But really just being two different people. Like being in a place where it's like we've been together for so long, but you know, I've grown apart. We've grown apart. I need to make the move to leave. I mean, it, it, my, it, I, I'm not going to boil it down to as simple as that because no, I, I, I there's, I mean, in, in my, in my thing, it was a lot more complicated. It's a lot for somebody just to, to, to say I'm done. I'm moving on. But also I feel, I think that happens. I, I, um, I think maybe over the course of like a few days, you realize, Oh, maybe this isn't right. I need to do something. And I like her character because she was, I think brave enough to kind of not let it sit and say, okay, this is it. I'm getting a divorce from you. But, but yeah, to hear that on that side. Yeah. Uh, 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 Spike Jones gives us so much perspective um, on, on like on two sides of, you know, being broken up with or moving on from relationship. Anyway. Uh, and yeah, I, I just want to point out Scott Johansson, Joaquin Phoenix, uh, those two. Uh, Joaquin Phoenix is a lovable dork in this. Um, and the fact that he's just by himself talking to nothing with Scott Johansson. Um, I, I'm sure she was on set. I don't know how they filmed this. I should look this up. We're just watching him react. We're just watching him talk to this voice that has no body. But it's it's riveting. And <laughs> I guess I I forgot about the sex scene. And watching it, or just hearing it, because it just cuts to black. We're, we're just watching a black screen as they're 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 uh, they're having sex with each other just over voice, like that stuff. It works. It shouldn't work. It's it's ridiculous on the page, but yeah, I buy it because they're both great actors. Um, have, have you done long distance before, Marcelo? I mean, that's how it is. I know it's how like it, it is, but but and it's, like. It's it's authentic. It's it's real. I, I I can understand how Joaquin was able to get into that mode, even though it is silly. Like you zoom out and it's a robot. Um, it's uh, some entity that he is talking to that is just uh, made to mimic uh, what she has learned through through uh, combing computers and people's personal lives it's all real emotion uh, that, that they are uh, portraying and I think both of them do it very very beautifully yeah um, this, this is this is still like top three Scarlett Johansson performances yeah. you don't ever even see her yeah yeah I mean just to be clear the the process of just uh, having sex over the over the phone not ridiculous but the fact that these two actors are so committed to doing it and it feels very real and it feels yeah like I don't know like two other actors uh, uh, of lesser quality could not have pulled this off uh, it could have been more laughable than it was I think I think that's what sure, my main yeah. thing is yeah it could, and it comes off romantically yeah okay, yeah like, it does yeah 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 uh, again I buy it I buy all this and and it feels like it could have been like a on a on a tightrope of like Will it work? Will it not work? But thanks to the script and the acting, God, it does work. Um, but yeah. Uh, any last thoughts on her before we move on to the? No, it, it's a fantastic film. I think yeah. it deserves reappraisal. Yeah. Um, I I hope so. 
uh, maybe this will get you know get things rolling. Maybe people will say, "Hey, remember her?" All right, that's the movie of the week. That was the award-winning uh, film "Her" by Spike Jones, Oscar-winning, and also talk from Society Awards-winning film. And now for the big stuff. This is it. We're about forty minutes in, and it's time for the show. That was the red carpet. There go all yes. the stars. The stars are in the auditorium. Yes, and now they are here to sit down and have us talk, uh, listen to us talk about what we have been watching. <laughs> no, we're not doing that. We're not doing that. No, <laughs> we got. All right, you don't want this to be three hours, do you? All right, all right. So it's time for the awards. This is it. The Talk Film Society this Awards, is it. the eleventh annual. Now, now pretend we have like some sort of like Billy Crystal entrance. Where we're 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 parroting the films of twenty twenty three. Um, mm. uh, uh, I don't know. Where uh, uh, I have to solve a murder. Uh, oh, <laughs> uh, but it turns out I'm an actor in the murder. Oh, um, uh, I I I have to uh, uh, build a bomb, but it turns out I'm plastic and I'm a Barbie doll, and. Uh, and the but the plastic Barbie doll was made by an Eve, by a sort of Frankenstein like scientist character. Oh, but the, the the Frankenstein character he gets killed by Godzilla who who steps on him. <laughs> but and Godzilla is only doing it because uh, he's she's in love with uh, two people at once, and she's trying to reconcile the, the, those two different loves. But it turns out they're all at a at a boarding school over the holidays, and they're being held over. <laughs> and uh, they're all slowly being poisoned uh, one by one in some kind of insurance scandal. But but then the 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 AI villain comes in and says, "You must do my bidding, or you all die." I don't know what that one is. Uh, Mission Impossible: Dead Reckoning Part One. Oh oh okay. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the skit. Whoa hey. <laughs> Yeah. All right. This is it. Uh, uh, well, uh, now this is our host intro. Hey, everybody! Welcome to the Talk from Society Awards. It's the eleventh annual, uh, honoring the films of twenty twenty three. Um, we we we've got such films here nominated as uh, Oppenheimer, right? Christopher Nolan. Uh, it's such a great. Uh, it's such an honor to have you here. To, to see you here i've been watching your film since i was a kid man uh and you built you made this amazing film about uh about uh the horrors of the atomic bomb and what we did as a society to uh create this uh horrible machine and uh uh greta gerwig you're here with your film about a uh, doll with plastic boobies <laughs> you dumb bitch <laughs> you dumb bitch <laughs> all right joke's over <laughs> All right, let's go to the awards. All right, this is it. No more tomfoolery. No more jokes. Let's go to the and, first award. And it looks like this is mine to present. This is yours. All right, Siobhan, this is it. First award, take it away. This award goes out uh, to our best animated episode friend, Joey. Uh, this is the best animated film. Your nominees... Are the boy and the heron? There's a clip playing. <laughs> Nimona, Spider Man across the Spider Verse. Thwip, thwip, thwip. The Super Mario Brothers movie. But don't call Mario. Suzume. I haven't seen that one. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles: Mutant Mayhem. Pizza. Ah, pizza. <laughs> <laughs> and your winner is the boy and the heron yeah hi i'm miyazaki and and company boy and the heron congratulations the boy and the heron uh it was a close race as the vote counter but yeah boy and the heron pulled out in front i still have not seen it i cannot comment all right but i mean keep your mouth shut yeah it's a ghibli and it's a hi i'm miyazaki ghibli i mean that's yeah that's something let's just say this should win the oscar this sunday uh but that's all i'll say all right next category best costume design here are your nominees 
for the Talk Film Society Awards Best Costume Design. Asteroid City. Free train, free train. <laughs> Barbie. <laughs> Killers of the Flower Moon. Oppenheimer. Poor Things. And your winner for the Talk Film Society Award Best Costume Design is... A Barbie. Barbie. Nobody nobody can say that's undeserved. Best no. costume design? I mean, come on. Look at those. I mean, literally, there's a scene pointing out how great the costumes are. Uh, this, I, I, I mean, come on. Uh, obvious winner. Uh, a clear front runner in my book. Uh, all right. Uh, costume design done. What's next? Best sound. Whoa. Godzilla minus one. John Wick Chapter 4 The Killer Ooh Killers of the Flower Moon Oppenheimer and The Zone of Interest Wow what a your winner, slate of nominees And your winner for best sound is Oppenheimer Woo bomb go boom. boom but after a long quiet Yes it's super quiet uh, I mean, come on, Siobhan. Did you notice that uh, the score of the movie just kept going on and on? And then, like, during the bomb testing sequence, it just all went quiet and then the bomb exploded? Yeah. Yeah, that's good I mean, stuff. It sounds like I'm being sarcastic, but I'm being honest here. Pretty good moment. All right. Next category Best Production Design. Look at these pretty buildings and sets. Here are your nominees Asteroid City. Barbie, Killers of the Flower Moon, Oppenheimer, and Poor Things. And your winner for Best Production Design at the Talk Film Society Awards is Barbie. Also well deserved. All those sets look so nice. Come on, if a physical set. Um, Dollhouses brought to life. Ah, uh, I mean, people who say this is just a two-hour commercial, they can go. Suck a shit, and stuff like the beach, where like the beach looks plastic. Like yeah. that's oh, that's great. Ugh. The 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 you know the 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 sets as they're moving along from like when they're on the boat and camping. That's all real. That's not CGI. All right, what are we doing here? I think they should do commentary for the Oscars after each win. Just like just just some people on stage just talking about the the winners. It's a good job, Be- Robert Robert Downey Best. Jr. <laughs> <laughs> best supporting actor. Well, don't don't get ahead of yourself. Oh, okay, okay. Best supporting actor, a big one. Robert De Niro, Killers of the Flower Moon. Robert Downey Jr., the aforementioned for Oppenheimer. Ryan Gosling for Barbie. Charles Melton for May December. Mark Ruffalo for Poor Things. Dominic Sessa for the holdovers and the TFSE goes to <laughs> don't call it don't call it that Charles Melton in May December whoa 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 that's an wow. upset wow that's a little bit of an upset Charles Melton and one we like a lot the Riverdale kid made good wow Riverdale I mean uh, uh, how many fans of Riverdale are in the talk from society I mean, this this could be. Uh, a crooked vote here. I mean, I I, I, I call shenanigans. Charles, you didn't deserve. This. I demand a recount. No, <laughs> no, Melton is great. I, I I sometimes the talk from society awards get it right in my book. Uh, I've been pounding this drum all season. I think it's a good win for Melton. He should have won something, and he won he won this. I, I I I can I can make him an award and send it to him. All right. Speaking of awards, let's let's give out another one. Made out of snakeskin. <laughs> Best original song. Why would he be? Why would he be made out of snakeskin? Isn't there a snake in that movie? In or yeah, made it, of, made yeah, out of, made out of larva. No, the, 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 there is a snake at, at the end. I mean, I mean, it, it a lot of a lot of the scenes, a lot of the important moments in May December take place in a pet store, and there's a snake at the very end of the movie too. So, yeah, snakeskin could work, <clears> or, or or made out of hot dogs because that's a that's a big quote from from the movie. Julianne Moore says we're we we don't have enough hot dogs. <sighs> Best original song. Do 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 do. Here are your nominees. Camp isn't home. 
from Theater Camp. Dear Alien Who Art in Heaven from Asteroid City. I'm Just Ken from Barbie. Peaches from Super Mario Brothers movie. Wazaze, a song for my people from Killers of the Flower Moon. And What Was I Made For from Barbie. And the winner for best song at the Talk Film Society Awards is I'm Just Ken from Barbie. Whoa. And here to perform <laughs> is Ryan Gosling. Pico. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I could do it. Hold on. Uh, hold on. How does it start? Doesn't see. No, I'm not going to do it. <clears throat> oh, okay. I could have. I could have. Uh, again, I hope this does not mean. I mean, I hope people out there aren't thinking, is Marcelo just picking the winners? I'm not. I can share the results if you want. DM me. Uh, this just so happens that everybody who, who is in Talk From Society is voting for my favorites. I mean, it's, it's We are just about Christmas. to get to an award where maybe you can't say that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay, listen. That- <laughs> to be upfront, you do what you got to do, Siobhan, with this category, and I'll talk about it. Okay, best original screenplay, Anatomy of a Fall, Asteroid City, The Holdovers, May, December, Past Lives, and Asteroid City is the winner. Sorry. (laughs) (laughs) I think I I didn't read that that off at the awards. And the winner is Asteroid City. (laughs) The winner is Asteroid City. Okay. Listen, this year I did something different with the with the ballots. Okay, I'm going to be upfront about this. This, this is this full transparency, and and Siobhan knows this. Uh, there was a tie in two categories. Uh, we had to break the tie for this category. It was between Asteroid City and Past Lives. Okay, as much as I love Past Lives, I consulted with Siobhan, so we're going to take the fall on this one um, together. Hand in hand. Uh, Asteroid City took the prize. Uh, yeah, we, we, we both just decided, this is our hosting privilege, we both just decided, let's just give it to Asteroid City, because we, yeah. we were both leaning that way a little bit. It was very close. I mean, you, you, put an ask, uh, uh, you can put an asterisk on this award, but yes, Asteroid City is our winner again. Super um, close call. And Marcella mentioned a second tie. We will get to it later. We'll get that to it later. We did yeah. not decide. No, that one is up in the air um, because, again, we'll talk about it. But for this one, it was that it was easier for us to decide. Asteroid City is the winner. Congrats, Wes Anderson. Um, and I think it's I think it's the right call. I I I am happy with the Wes Anderson win here. He's won before at the Talk from Society Awards. Um, so good job. We can move on. Ooh, controversy uh, uh, sidestepped. Oh, I'm next. Best adapted screenplay. There's no controversy here. This was there's a straight winner here. Nominees are American Fiction, Barbie, Killers of the Flower Moon, Oppenheimer, and Poor Things. And your winner for best adapted screenplay is Killers of the Flower Moon. Excellent. Woo! Screenplay Excellent. by Eric Roth and Martin Scorsese. Yeah, this one was a clear winner. And by the way, I, sh- I should I should preface this. Except for two categories, uh, all of these winners are are legit winners. Uh, uh, um, there's no question. Like a category like this, uh, Killers of Fly Moon was ahead the whole time, and I'm happy for it. it it's it's definitely in my book. Um, one that should have been nominated at the Oscars, but I'm glad it won here. Uh, one of the best of the year. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm just glad to see you know Killers getting uh, some some love it deserves. Yeah, it should. All right, next category. This one's on you, Siobhan. Best visual effects. So feature some explosions and stuff in your <laughs> mind. <laughs> the I think, creator. I was gonna say. Nope. I think. I think every movie in this category has an explosion. I think you're probably right. The Creator, Godzilla Minus One, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1, and Oppenheimer. And your winner for Best Visual Effects is 
Godzilla minus one. Yes. Woo. Wow. Deserving win. Gotta see that Godzilla my movie. Ah, uh, it's such a good Godzilla movie. It's so good. Special effects are, are, are great. I don't remember who said this on Twitter. It's it's uh, somebody who everybody hates on, on Twitter. But he came out of it saying, after seeing this movie, he goes, this movie sucked. The drama was boring. The visual effects were not great. Uh, have, have you seen that tweet from, from no. this guy? No. Terrible person. Um, but he's wrong. I'm glad he, uh, Godzilla Minus One got the Oscar nomination for Best Visual Effects and might win. Uh, truly great movie that I think uh, should get a lot of recognition. Um, and is already getting recognition from the, from the talk from society. And now, Best Film Editing. Ooh. Here are your nominees. Anatomy of a Fall. John Wick Chapter 4. The Killer. Killers of the Flower Moon. And Oppenheimer. Your winner for Best Film Editing at the 11th Annual Talk Film Society Awards is Oppenheimer. Good. Deserving win. Uh, I'm I'm uh, uh, here to accept... Uh, on behalf of uh, Jennifer Lame is Marcelo Pico. Thank you. I'll, I'll accept this, and I will go ahead and say this is for Jennifer Lame's uh, work for Tenant instead of Oppenheimer. Thank you, and good night. Oh, good Christ. <laughs> uh, truly one of the best out there. Good job, Jennifer Lame, Oppenheimer. All right. And now we've reached the part of the show where we... Just, just, just sit down and talk about something special, Siobhan. Uh, yeah, we have an a special and a special award. To yeah, give yeah. The, uh, uh, now, I mentioned uh, uh, several minutes ago uh, during our discussion of the first annual talk from Society Awards that there were special awards handed out there. Um, the Founders Award and the Honorary Award. Uh, I guess we can call this the Honorary Award, right, Siobhan? Uh, uh, the Talk Society yeah. Honorary Award. Yeah, and this is something that we could give out to uh, a film, a person, a concept, whatever we thought had like a very notable impact this year uh, that is special to to us uh, and uh, you know you could, you could say this is our our hosters' privilege. Yeah, uh, something that we. Because, I mean, I, we read our top tens and our favorites throughout the year. Most of those are not represented in these lists. Uh, so we get to just make a quick shout out to uh, one thing that we uh, would like to make a quick shout out to. Yeah. And I asked Siobhan, hey, uh, where would the best place be to ask people's imp- opinions on what this could be and on, on, on what could we, uh, what could <clears throat> we uh, give this to? Oh, okay. We're going to do that first. So, uh, yes. So, I went to the talkfilmsociety.com slash discord. Yep. No went way. Back to them. Once again, back to the well. <laughs> I, I, and uh, I, I, I told Siobhan to do this because I wanted to squeeze one more drip of this for another another uh, episode. <laughs> I, let's... Uh, let's see if we can squeeze one more next week. But for this week, so, we got we got some we got some uh, 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 interaction to read off. So I, I was a little confused by what people were doing based on what my question was. <laughs> let's but, read them. Let's read them. But what we're gonna and I, and I kind of like it. I kind of like it. Um, so it seems like people made up their own awards. Uh, so here, Joey comes in. Most necessary theatrical re-release. Stop making sense. That, that, that made a lot of waves last year. Uh, you know what? That you know, as uh, I, I understand the exercise uh, may have been confusing, or or maybe this is just what I wanted uh, because I think that makes sense. If if we were to say honorary award to stop making sense for coming back to theaters and re and and like uh, and shining a light on a on a true classic. You know, I, I I could see that happening. Uh, w- will that be our pick? I want to hear more. Uh, Jay McMillan uh, brings up something he's brought up many times before that I still don't know what it is. Uh, he says, "Best visual poem: All Dirt Roads Taste of Salt." Yeah, uh, maybe I owe you a Google. 
Yeah. Uh, so uh, directed by Raven Jackson. It's a movie that played at the uh, Austin Film Society. Speaking of societies, uh, here in town uh, uh, a few weeks ago, but I missed. Uh, the plot says the film charts the growth, loves, and heartbreaks of a black woman in Mississippi from her childhood through her adult years. So sounds interesting. Sounds like I would love this movie, but I have not seen it yet. So that's all Dirt Road's Taste of Salt. Best visual poem. Yeah. Tara. Uh, best use of a catchphrase, Oppenheimer. <laughs> now I am become death, the destroyer of worlds. You know what? Okay. That's the winner. <laughs> uh, no, it's not. Uh, now we move. We keep going. Joey. He nominates a second. The funniest visual effects from Dungeon, uh, Dungeons and Dragons Honor Among Thieves. It is the effect of Chris Pine melting into uh, when his like decoy breaks or whatever. Yeah, and, like melts. That's funny. I thought you That's know funny. you know uh, we got four laughing emojis on that one. By the way, wow, people reacting, and we have Matt C going yes this <laughs> as he replies to it. Um, Jay McMillan also nominates a second uh, best musical number. No one is talking about. Brownie Tuesday from Joyride? Uh, Gonna be honest, Jay McMillan, I've seen that movie and I do not know what you're talking about. <laughs> right. Uh, cool Jama also came in with something I was confused about until somebody else uh, <laughs> decided to uh, clarify it. Uh, he said, best moped you'll never guess. And uh, if it was left up to my own devices, I never would have guessed. You would have never guessed. But. Jay McMillan clarifies it was the Pope's Exorcist, and uh, sure was a fine moped. Yeah, uh, solid moped in a solid movie. Uh, can you imagine if we just gave it to the moped in the uh, the Exorcist movie? <laughs> and Sam Shaw first comes with our final suggestion. Uh, he says, "Io Itabiri for damn what a year." Uh, he lists her credits bottoms TMNT I believe he means Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles <laughs> cross uh, <laughs> uh, Mutant Mayhem uh, Spider-Verse I mean <laughs> I believe he means Spider-Man across the Spider-Verse and Theater Camp plus The Bear and Clone High so yeah I mean look that yes okay absolutely now let's get into it okay and 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 uh, Siobhan and I have already talked about this off mic but we we can go back and forth here um, out of all the uh, out of all the suggestions given, I think the only one that I'm intrigued by is the Io uh, Idebre uh, suggestion. Okay, uh, I think she's had a, an amazing year. I love Io. Um, I'm looking at her filmography yet again, and Sam already talked about it. Theater Camp, Bottoms, Spider Man Across the Spider Verse. Mutant Mayhem, plus the bear. What a year. Okay. But, Siobhan, what do you have up your sleeve? So, what I would like to award is a little horror film that uh, uh, ended up being released in theaters. Uh, just, just a handful of theaters. It, it, it wasn't a guarantee that it would be released at all. It could have been a shutter exclusive, but they did release it in a handful of theaters and it grew and grew because it ended up being a little bit of a surprise cult hit. Um, that film is called, uh, Marink. Oh, Skinner Marink, a film that I do believe shares a taste of the future of independent horror filmmaking a film that as I was watching it, I got feelings that I have only gotten from the greatest horror films, such as a Texas chainsaw massacre, if you will, where I feel like this is demonic. This is crazy. This, uh, how did this movie get made? Um, uh, that this, this comes from the mind of a very talented special filmmaker. Um, a film that I really hope tries to get replicated and it very possibly could because you can do this on as small a budget as you have. Um, but doesn't mean that you can make it with this much uh, talent and this much uh, 
restraint. And uh, as retro as it is, I think it is something that kind of speaks to uh, us um, uh, our as it uses our nostalgia against us. Um, it uses nostalgia as a weapon. Um, and it gets at just a very primal fear of fear of the dark, of the unknown. It, it uses very simple horror concepts, but presents them in this fantastically new, evil, demonic, fucked up way that I have never seen before, and I hope to see uh, carried onward. If the last 10 years of horror were elevated social commentary, I want the next 10 years of horror to be whatever the hell Skin and is. Experimental let's fucking do that. Like, let's fucking try something. Yeah. And, uh, I'm with you, Siobhan. Uh, I think this is going to be it. Skin Marink is going to get our honorary award this year. Um, I'm with you. Like it didn't make my top 10, but it made my number 11. Like if for a while there, I, it was, it was in my top 10. I was praising it. I was on, I was always on the let's go skin Marink side. Uh, and like you were saying, like to me, it hit primal fears, uh, going deep into my, uh, nostalgia and fear of being a child and all that was, was on screen. And I watched this in a theater. I experienced it like it, like, like, uh, so many people did, Uh, but I came out saying, yeah, this is what I want in a horror movie. Um, I do hope it signals like a new wave of horror, but I'm happy that it exists, and I'm happy to praise it here and say, hey, here's a special award. Uh, Kyle Edward Ball at the Makers of Skin Marink. Uh, congratulations. Uh, 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 that's it. The honorary award this year goes to Skin Marink. And uh, thank you for all uh, the Talk From Society people for your mentions that did not get used yes thank you uh you know if i have to choose one of those i'll go with Aya. yeah i i, I, I mean I, i'll to be honest yeah i i mentioned io uh uh last night when i talked to siobhan uh it was between skin marink and io uh but skin marink won out in the end um but yeah uh, it, it, because i mean come on io is gonna have another stellar year next year yes but i think skin marink should it, it it's 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 polarizing for a reason Right, but if we can get more people, if we can get at least one more person to watch Skin Marink, you know, I can sleep well at night. Okay, and you want me to sleep well at night, don't you, listeners? But uh, if you do, if you do end up oh. being the person that does watch Skin Marink, <laughs> I don't think you're going to sleep well at night. Yeah, there you go. Thank you. Uh, all right, so uh, we hope you don't sleep well at night. Is what we're trying to say. All right. Hee <laughs> hee. Teehee. So special award done. Congratulations, Skin Marink. That is our special award. Yes. Um, <clears throat> okay. Uh, we back back to the main show. Oh, Sorry, we're back. Everyone. Hey. That, that was like our in memoriam. Yeah. <laughs> That's our version. All of those end. who died making Skin Marink. <laughs> uh, best acting ensemble. We're back with a big one. Woo. Asteroid City. Barbie. The Holdovers. Killers of the Flower Moon, Oppenheimer, and your winner, of course, is Oppenheimer. Oppenheimer. Uh, I mean, how how could one how how could one uh, casting crew put together a team of seventy uh, <laughs> white people that like, are all somebody that you've seen before? Yeah, the whitest of people all in one movie. Um, like, hey, there's Matt Damon. Uh, he's the co-star. Um, but, but then you also have Rami Malek for two minutes. You got Casey Affleck for a minute. Uh, um, and then Florence Pugh's in there for a while. Yeah. Florence Pugh, Josh Hartnett. Um, Mr. Bongos. Very, very, very memorable stunt casting. It's a lot of stunt casting, I think. Josh Peck. Um, but... It all works. Like it, it, it never distracts from the film. It's it's, no. it's yeah. They all feel like it's uh they fit into the puzzle. Their puzzle even, pieces that fit in very well. I was gonna say even even a softy uh could no. do like a performance like that, but like not stick out. Like be part of the of the massive quilt. This this movie is made up of like odds and ends. 
Um, but it works. I think it's a good. I think it's a, it's a good pick. Congrats. I mean, I mean, looking at that category, it has some stiff competition because I think Asteroid City gives it a run for its money. Um, uh, also, Killers too, but Oppenheimer and Barbie. Barbie too, I, 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 yeah, and and holdovers for, for as much as you don't like it, Siobhan. I mean, I guess it's not about the size of the ensemble; it's about yeah who they cast. It's about who they cast. And, I mean, speaking of cast, best supporting actress. These people got cast in movies. Here we go. Here are your nominees for best supporting actress: Emily Blunt, Oppenheimer; Penelope B. Cruz, Ferrari; Claire Foy. All of Us Strangers. Rachel McAdams. Are You There, God? It's Me, Margaret. Julianne Moore. May, December. And Divine Joy Randolph. The Holdovers. Your winner. Mm. Best Supporting Actress at the Talk from Society Awards. 11th Annual. Honoring the best of 2023. Is Divine Joy Randolph. For The Holdovers. She's sweeping them all, isn't she? Even the Talk from Society Awards. Even ours. Even wow. Our awards. Coming in. Unbeatable. Unbeatable. Nobody can stop her. Nobody should stop her in my book. All right. Next award. Baby. We're looking at we're looking, Speaking of looking at some of the best looking films of this year. <laughs> with best cinematographer. Uh Dan Lawson for John Wick Chapter Four. Rodrigo Prieto, Killers of the Flower Moon. Robbie Ryan, Poor Things. Hoyt Van Hoytema, Oppenheimer. And Robert Yeoman for Asteroid City. And your winner, the cinematographer of our winner 10 years ago, (laughs) the cinematographer of her, Hoyt Van Hoytema for Oppenheimer. Wow. Amazing. It's full circle, doesn't it? It does. Oh, it's almost like nothing changes. Uh, <laughs> good job, Van Hoytema. Incredible work in Oppenheimer. Uh, uh, hey, I, I want to point this out. I mean, uh, uh, we're we're recording this on Sunday, uh, uh, like just a few minutes after the voting closed for this. So I, I had to make this document pretty quick before we recorded. But pointing out some of the nominees so far. I mean, John Wick Chapter Four getting a lot of love. In the cat in, in a lot of categories, so I want to point that out. Also, of course, Asteroid City. So, uh, yeah, uh, uh, you'd wish these were the Oscars. I think that was the pre- that, that, that was the um, uh, thesis of starting these awards. It's like, hey, maybe we can do better than the Oscars, right, Siobhan? Are we doing better than the Oscars? Maybe, 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 maybe. maybe. All right. Ah, having said all that, now we get to the other category. <laughs> Do the Oscars do this? Do the Oscars do what we're about to do right now? <laughs> well, at, at the Oscars version of this, they hand out they they hand out a piece of paper and have people pass it around, yeah. scratching like a little chicken scratch next to. Do you like me? Yes or no? Sort of that sort of thing happening. <laughs> Best film score. Let me let me name the nominees and then we'll get into the business. Here we go. Best film score. Your nominees are. The Boy and the Heron, Godzilla Minus One, Killers of the Flower Moon, Oppenheimer, Poor Things, and Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. Okay, like I said before, I'm trying trying a new ballot system. Maybe I'll go back to the old system next year, (laughs) considering how things went this year. Um, (laughs) But this was a tie when we started recording. So what did we do, Siobhan? What did I su- what, what did I suggest we do? So I went into the TFS Awards channel, um, and I just uh, we, we posted an emergency tiebreaker vote. You click the bomb emoji if you want to vote for Oppenheimer. You click the flower emoji if you want to vote for Killers of the Flower Moon. Those are the two that it came down to. All right. Uh, I've got the result here. I think it's pretty much set. So here's your winner for best film score. According to the emergency tiebreaker uh, on the Discord uh, uh, over at the Talk from Society Discord, your winner for best film score is Oppenheimer. Boom. 
Wow. Bam. Wow. Boom. Bam. Boom. Straight to the boom. Congratulations, Ludwig Goranson. Uh, now this was one where Siobhan and I disagreed. Let's 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 get into this. Um, okay. Coming in before we recorded, I knew it was a tie, and I told I, I asked Siobhan, "Listen, we could either decide here and now what the winner is, or we figure something else out." I already knew we were at both ends of this. I was on the Oppenheimer side. Siobhan was on the killer's side. That's it. I mean, how do you feel now, having been beaten by the Discord? people i was beaten very handily uh th- three quarters of the vote did go to oppenheimer yeah um but all i can say is like listen to these scores in isolation i think you will like killers of the flower moon more especially if you have any sort of um heart heart <laughs> in your in your little chest there <laughs> or or uh or uh uh, like for like country music or something. This oh, is a yeah. damn fine Southern Gothic rock album, country rock album. Yeah. That uh, uh, I think deserves. Uh, I'm, I'm glad it was the tiebreaker. I mean, that it is a firm number two. And look, uh, yeah, the Oppenheimer score is great, and it, it accents the film incredibly. But I just, uh, I think so does the Killers just as well. And in isolation, Killers wins on that front as well. So I don't know. Yeah, the, um, the, um, this was tough, honestly, because I I do really like the Killers of the Flower Moon score, but Oppenheimer. I've said it so many times on this show. I'm tired of saying it. I'll say it one, one more time next week. But it's a favorite score of the year, and it's the reason why I think Oppenheimer is so good. But yeah, sorry I had to come to this, Siobhan. Uh But yeah, uh, uh, n- know that Killers came so close. Uh, what one could say awards are dumb. And there should be no number one. We should all be number very one. Silly, yeah, they're, yeah, they're, they're very dominant. silly. All right. Anyway, uh, uh, call out the next it's an award. Honor just to be dominated. <laughs> but what's not done? This is the only award that's not done. This one. This one here. Best actor. Woo! We're getting to the big ones. We're getting to the real big ones. Big meaty boys. The meat. Uh, much, Leonardo much. DiCaprio. Uh, Killers of the Flower Moon. Uh, Zac Efron for the Iron Claw. Love it. Paul Giamatti, the Holdovers. Killian Murphy, the Oppenheimer. Andrew Scott, All of Us Strangers. Jeffrey Wright for American Fiction. And the actor goes to... (laughs) Killian Murphy for Oppenheimer, my countryman. Wow. Wow. The Peaky Blinder. I can't be mad about it. Good job, Killian Hope Murphy. he gets his Oscar. It looks like it. I think so. All right. Best actor. Well, and, oh, By the way, Zac Efron getting nominated here. Yeah, just shout out Zac Efron. I mean, come on. I mean, again, I, I'm happy that I'm doing this every year where I think this is why I'm doing it. Just to, just to, just to shout out these these performances that... Normally wouldn't get shouted out. So, Zac Efron, all the love. Uh, oh, love they made it. Yeah. Uh, so, great, great job, Talk from Society. All right. Best international film. That's our next category. Uh, here are your nominees for the Talk Film Society Awards: Anatomy of a Fall, The Boy and the Heron, Godzilla minus one, The Taste of Things. And the zone of interest. Your winner for best international film at the 11th annual Talk from Society Awards, honoring the best of film of 2013, 2023. Ah, I've had too much to drink. Here we go. The winner is Godzilla minus one. Wow. Wow. Godzilla uh, uh, towering over these other international films. Anatomy of a Fall Born, The Hair and Taste of Things, Zone of Interest. Wow. Wow. You know what? I think this is the Society of Talk Film has a good good taste. All right, that's my comment. We can move on. <laughs> okay, and now I get to present both Best Actor and Best Actress. What a wow! What a joy! What an honor you have. Best Actress: Lily Gladstone, Killers of the Flower Moon. Sandra Huller, Anatomy of a Fall. Greta Lee. 
past lives. Natalie Portman, May December. Margot Robbie, Barbie. Emma Stone, Poor Things. And your winner for the best performance by a female actor in this year is Lily Gladstone, Killers of the Flower Moon. Wow. Excellent. Good job. Correct. Incredible. Very correct. Oh, how I wish this were the Oscars. I mean, I, Some... I, I, I do hope. But yeah, great, great pick. Great nominees. Uh, love to see Greta Lee Portman in there. You got Margot. Come on. But Gladstone winning it. Good job, Lily. You know, I think... Have you seen this picture going around where she's... She, it, it's her in college... She's holding an award, yeah. and on the yeah. uh, 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 on the picture it says, "Future Talk from Society Award Winner." <laughs> I know that's crazy. It's right? Crazy I, that, that was that. that was like what seven eight years ago. Yeah, yeah. And like just to think, like when she hears this episode, it's <laughs> she's it's like gonna blow her mind. She's like this. Finally, I I've done everything I need to do. She doesn't even attend the Oscars. She just she. <laughs> <laughs> Um, good job, Lily Gladstone. I do sincerely wish she wins the Oscar. We won't know the, the next time we talk, Siobhan, for this uh, show. We'll we'll have known the Oscar winners. We'll wow. we'll, we'll know who, who won. So wow, wild to think. Wild to think that the future is coming. All right, next category: best director. Second to last category. This is it. I think Siobhan was right. Well, th- this is th- this is going to be a short one. Like we're almost done here. Best director. Here are your nominees: Wes Anderson, Asteroid City; Greta Gerwig, Barbie; Christopher Nolan, Oppenheimer; Martin Scorsese, Killers of the Flower Moon; Celine Song, Past Lives; and Justine. Tria, Anatomy of a Fall, your winner for Best Director at the Talk Film Society Awards, 11th Annual, is Chrissy Knowles himself, Christopher Nolan, Oppenheimer. Chrissy, Chris, 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 Chris. Christopher Nolan, wow, wow. What a career the man has had. Wow. And it all culminates. Yeah, I mean, he finally got it. I mean, he finally got the Talk Film Society Award Best Director. Award. Yep. They, again, yep. he's been clamoring for all his life. Wow. All right. Best director done. Now, best film. We're going to split this up five and five. You'll do the first five. I'll do the next five. You'll announce the winner. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. All right. All right. That's how you want to do it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, your best film nominees are Anatomy of a Fall. Asteroid City Barbie The Boy and the Heron Godzilla Minus One The Holdovers Killers of the Flower Moon Oppenheimer Past Lives and Poor Things What a crop What a crop Amazing Nominees. Uh, I mean, I'm I'm very happy with these nominees, and, and I can't wait to hear what the winner is. Yeah, I'm struggling to open the envelope. Come on, hurry up! Don't on, drop please. it. Pick it up. Oh, what are you doing? Shoot. Okay, okay, okay. I got it open. Okay, okay. Open it. Read up. it. Uh, wow, wow! We have a surprise here. Your best film of 2023 is Killers of the Flower Moon. Wow. Wow. Did not expect that. Did not. I honestly didn't either. I, it was close, but Killers of the Flower Moon pulled it off. Marcella, this is, this is what you said very early on in this season. Well, listen, Um, again, you said, (laughs) I'm not the, the talk from society awards. I, I hope I'm not influencing. I'm not I hope I'm not influencing them in any way. But it seems like I am <laughs> because you're right, Siobhan. Months ago, I said I feel at the Oscars in particular. I feel like it's going to be a split. Nolan director, Killers, the Fly Moon Best Picture, and here we see that split. 
Nolan director and the Talk from Society voters picked Killers as the best film. So weird, right? Wild, yeah. wild stuff. Wild. But deserving winner. I'm very happy with Absolutely. this. Absolutely. I I personally think the best film of the year. Yeah. I I you know, I've said this before. Uh, uh when it comes to the Oscars, I think almost every uh, uh, uh award that Oppenheimer will win, I think if Killers is in that category, I think Killers should be uh, winning over Oppenheimer. In my p- opinion, I still think they're great movies, but I think Killers of Flower Moon is uh, is a better film, and 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 to see it win Best Film here, I'm happy with that. So I'm happy. What a night! Those were the Talk from Society awards. Wow, Siobhan, we did it. Wow, what fun! What, what fun. fun! That was it. I mean, I I I hope people who care about this stuff are happy. I hope y'all are happy. And I don't know what else to say. Siobhan, any last words? If you're not happy, at least be feeling something. Yeah, like, come on. Any emotion. That's really what yeah. we want. Come on. I, I I think that's it for this this episode, though. Yeah. We, can we end actually it made here. a short one for yeah, once. Yeah, this is a short episode. We did it. Um, congrats, Siobhan. You were right. Uh, in and out. All done. Uh, but yeah, I think that's it. Uh, Siobhan, thank you. I'll talk to you one more time next week, and then that's it. Thank God. Yep, thank God. Uh, and l- folks listening, thanks for listening. Um, uh, plugs, uh, go to talkfromsociety.com. Uh, 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 follow the Twitter. Uh, I'll, I'll tweet stuff out during the Oscars. Uh, that's it. Go to Instagram. I'm using that more. Uh, at Talk From Society. Uh, and, as always, I'll see you at the Oscars. No, wait. I never say that. I see you at the movies. Nope. I don't say that either. All right, bye. Bye.